With the gleaming deaths finally in PTS, we now finally have access to the raids. And in this video, we're going to be covering all the mechanics that we currently have. Now keep in mind that some of the mechanics and the difficulty might get changed in the future. Now all of this was done inside of a custom server and we are using some of the 4 star mods. The settings that have been changed are carry weight as well as free crafting. But with that, let's get right to it. Now for stage 1, the Guardian. For our armor, we're going to be using a Union PA set with overeaters and limit breaking for the 4 star. For our weapon, we're going to be using a bloodied 50 crit 25 LVC polished Gatling Plasma. As for our build, we are going to be using a bloodied PA crit build. And this is going to be the build that I'll be using the entire run. The power armor legendary mods will be changed slightly as well as the weapon. Now as for the mechanics for the guardian, he does a lot of damage and has a lot of different attacks. The weapons that he'll use are based on how much health he loses. But for starters, you want to focus on his ultra magnetic shield generator or fusion core, which is located on his back. As long as that is up, you will not be able to do any kind of damage to his torso. So be sure to focus that as much as you can. Now, if you plan on running this solo, using Vats would be the best way because no matter where you go, his front will always be facing you. If you're running on a team, having everyone spread out will give everyone an opportunity to shoot the core when his back is to them. But if you're all using Vats, you can group up if you'd like, but make sure that you have a lot of healing. And the reason for this, his first attacks are going to be pretty strong right off the bat. He has Gatling lasers as well as missile launchers. Now these missile launchers will do a ton of damage. If you don't have a lot of healing, you will most likely get destroyed. I've tried this without PA and as well as not having my overeaters active and it ripped right through me. Being full health did help a little bit, but if you don't pay attention to your HP, you're going to die. Now you don't have to tank the damage straight to the face. There are pillars and catwalks that you can use as cover. But keep in mind the pillars and the catwalks do have HP so they can get destroyed. But once you take out the shield you'll be able to do damage to his torso and you can do a lot of damage. But the more health you take out, the more weaponry he'll be able to use. Now before that happens, you're going to need to locate one of the three big orange doors that are in the arena and if one of them opens, get to it as soon as you possibly can. If you don't, you will die. Now once this clears out the room, it'll blow the doors and you'll have two more tries to finish off the guardian. Once all those doors are broken, you will insta fail once he gets into that phase again. As for his additional weapons, he'll be shooting green plasma balls in a 360 degree radius, as well as shooting you with extra lasers and an assaultron laser. These can be out healed as well as blocked by the cover. But that's basically stage 1. Now to show you real quick that it is able to be done solo here in the, PT the current PTS, here is the kill for the Guardian, as well as some of the rewards. Now for the rewards, in each stage it is completely random. You are guaranteed a little bit of junk as well as experience, caps, script, and modules, and a trophy. But there is a chance for you to get one of the Vulcan PA pieces as well. Also a random legendary mod. Now for stage 2, the drill. This one is actually a lot more difficult than it seems, and the goal is to fill the container with some fuel. Now the clip that you're seeing right now was done in a god mode custom world to kind of show off a little bit of the mechanics. Now this part you cannot actually do solo. I've tried this many many times even in this god mode server. I could not complete it by myself. But in the regular server you're going to have to watch out for these ultra magnetic mole miners. If you see them run or if you have the huevos to uh, face them try to dodge him or jump over him. Otherwise you're going to die. If he hits you, it is instant death and a guaranteed broken piece. And there's a lot of them that do spawn within the tunnels. Now I forgot to mention earlier, if you die, you cannot respawn. Well, you can respawn, but you'll be kicked out of the raid. So if you're in a team, just wait until all of your teammates die out or wait until they finish because you'll still get rewards at the end. Now, before I made this clip, we ran this with a buddy of mine and we took about two or three hours trying to finish this first stage or the second stage and it we couldn't do it. And the reason for this is because as time goes on, the mole miners and the mole rats here in the drill room become stronger. So if you're running in a team, you want to have someone or a couple people defend while you have the rest go out and find fuel. Now a method that we figured out was that helped a, a bit was having one person stay behind 
and using a very strong weapon with a high mag and that is able to use vats and gun foo. Now you may be wondering why not use auto grenade launchers, missile launchers, cremators, mini nukes or whatever. Unfortunately that doesn't seem to work, especially as they get stronger. It seems that they have very high explosive resistances which makes it a lot more difficult to kill them as they get stronger. So using a weapon with good DPS, high damage and a high mag makes it a lot easier and more consistent. But running it with 4 people will definitely make this a little bit easier. Now also back to the ultra magnetic miners. These guys cannot die. You can't shoot them, you can't blow them up, and you can't even uh, crowd control them. Slows, stuns do not work on them. But if you're able to dodge their attack or you have enough space to jump over them, you can. And that's basically stage 2. Now onto stage 3, the trio. This stage is probably one of my favorites because it's really really cool fighting these three guys and they're also kind of a pain in the butt. Now how this stage works is that you need to destroy these generators that are located in the A, B, and C sectors. B is located on the second floor and A and C are located on the first floor. Now these generators will not be down for long because there will be waves of repair bots that will go to these generators. Now I recommend using a weapon that has vats and good with gun foo because it'll make it a lot easier trying to take them all out before they reach the rooms. But once you get all those taken care of, you'll be free to damage the trio as much as you want. Now little info on these guys. Bloodhound is one of the trios that is using a melee weapon but does have the potential to one tap you. But he is very very easy to evade so he's not too much of a worry. Next is Lynx. Lynx is an auto grenade launcher user that does cryo damage and currently does no damage to you. So not too much of a threat. But the biggest threat is Vulture. Vulture uses a gauss weapon and even at full health I have ran it a couple times as a full health and he would was able to one tap me. But once I was able to get my full overeaters he would do about 95% of my HP. That dude hurts. Now as for the weak points on the trio, I know a lot of you may see power armor and immediately think fusion core. Nope. The head seems to be the weak spot for these guys. Now honestly I have shot him in the torso and it did a ton of damage but when you shoot him in the face, it uh, you can see that health go down pretty quickly. But that is basically stage 3. Destroy the generators, take out the repair bots as quickly as you can, and then focus on the trio. After many 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 tries, finally was able to clear it as a duo. As for the rewards, unfortunately I did not get lucky on this run. Just a bunch of chems, some uh, scrap, and another trophy. Now on to stage 4, the horde. Now this is a very fun one. It is really really simple, but can be very very overwhelming. For this stage I do recommend full health, as well as a bit of poison resistance. And the goal of this is to break these crystals here to do damage to the horde. No matter what you use, guns, explosives, poisons, dots, fire, whatever it is, it will not do any damage besides breaking those crystals. Now in this stage, especially when it comes to communicating with your teammates, using the ping system will help a lot. But this will definitely be a stage where communication is key. Now for the enemies that spawn, there's only two enemies that you should be very, very worried of. The first one being the ultra magnetic mole miner there, as well as death claws. At a certain point, it is going to guarantee two death claw spawns, which will kick some butt. It has the potential to one shot, but also has the potential to get you to like one HP. The mole miner though, he will one shot you. Now. I know you guys have noticed that really big shiny crystal right in the middle of the room. Do not break it. Or at least don't break it right off the rip. Whatever you do, don't. I know it's pretty, but just just let it stew for a little bit. The reason why is because that crystal does a ton of damage to the horde. So it's best to wait until you get the death claws to spawn and a bunch of the horde to gather around that crystal. You'll see here in a little bit how much damage it can do, but it will do a lot, and I'm not exaggerating. But other than that, this is stage 3. These crystals are scattered all over the place on the top floor and the bottom floor on both sides. Now one thing I have noticed, especially for the miner, is you need to get him at least 
within the radius but not too close for it to actually do damage because there have been a couple times where i broke the crystal and it did no damage to him but if i broke it where he's just in the radius it does damage but at the end he'll most likely be the last one you have to take out now this should be the moment where we break the big crystal as you can see the death claws have spawned and there are a lot of mobs kind of gathering around us so we're going to get on top of this uh, platform and then once we break it look at the hp look at that mm -mm -mm. beautiful and that my friends is why you save the big shiny crystal in the middle for when the death claws come now they didn't kill them all the way but it got them down halfway but that's stage four and just to show the rewards here is what we got some more script caps experience chems all that other good stuff fortunately i wasn't lucky again but we got another trophy but now for stage five the terror this fight is so fun and he does a lot of poison damage now i recommend bringing in as much poison resistance as you can but it is possible to do this without union pa so the gear that i'm currently running is the same overeaters uh, pa but i'm now using a full set with poison resistance as well as a level one uh poison resistance legendary perk card i forgot the name of it for the weapon, I'm currently using a Vampires with the con new Conductors 4-star Legendary. As for Rivis, he's using an Ultra Sight with the same setup as well as the same weapon. I did send them my build, so we are using the exact same build as well. Now how this fight works is the Ultra Sight Terror has a couple of attacks. One of those is a slow yellow glob that flies towards you. It can be dodged if you walk past it, but if it does connect, it will do a lot of poison damage. The second attack is a Gatling Spit that you cannot dodge. This will tear your HP to shreds. I have a ton of poison resistance and it can instantly melt me. As well as if you stand on those yellow uh, remains on the ground, it will do some damage to you as well. Now the other mechanic that the Ultra Sight Terror has is that it will occasionally bring up its tail. When it does, ignore everything and fight the tail it's super duper squishy so you can take it out pretty quickly but if the tail strikes it will remove a portion of the platform that you are fighting on right now and i do believe there are only five hits that the floors can take once all those five hits go through you will no longer have a platform to stand on and it will be an instant wipe to your team now i did do this before on a god mode custom world to kind of see what the mechanics were at first so this is technically my second run but we had a different mechanic that was experienced in that run with three people but that mechanic is a scream and it has a pretty hefty knockback the way to counter it is move forward just keep running forward or jump forward if you don't it's going to knock you off the platforms into the acid pit or the acid lake surrounding the platforms but i only experienced that during the trio run so i don't know if there's actually going to be another mechanic that i'm missing that i haven't experienced yet with four players unfortunately we didn't have a fourth player to run with but minus the scream the regular attacks the spit the gatling spit and the tail were what we experienced here as a duo now the vampire conductor combination, granted it will not be available as soon as the raids come out, was a really really strong combo to run. I'm sure you guys noticed that I was sitting still for a lot of the damage being dealt to me and tanking it. Because I believe conductors does stack as well as using your vampires. Which doesn't seem like a lot but if you have a full team running conductors for healing and AP, it's quite strong. And this was the best combo that we were able to get as a duo after 15 to maybe 20 attempts. It might have been more. But I managed to find a clip of the yell or the scream that does the knockback. So this is the trio run where we're running with the god mode on. You can see that I'm getting pushed back. And it looks like it does it three times. There's one, there's two, and three. And then after that, we are back to the normal fight. This was the only time out of the runs that we've done that we've experienced this. 
not a single time in duos. But after a ton of tries, we finally took out the Ultracite Terror as a two-man squad. So if they decide to keep the difficulty where it's at right now, it is very possible to do this as a two-man. The hardest part will most likely be stage two. As for the rewards, I actually got lucky this time. Got a four-star uh, four-star mod, a plan for the Vulcan PA, and the Ultracite Terror Sword. In the God Mode run after we cleared, I got absolutely nothing, which broke my heart. But yeah, those are all five stages for the raid. Now to answer a, a couple questions that I have seen through some streams is, one, can you save progress if you don't finish the raid? The answer to that is yes. No matter what stage that you finish, you will be able to pick up where you left off. So if you finish stage one but had to leave at stage two, you can go back and do stage two. If you left at stage three and finished it and have access to stage four, you can go back and do stage four. But you can also repeat the first stage by simply going to your quests and forfeiting the quest line. Are rewards restricted to weekly or dailies? No. You can get rewards for every single run and it's all random. Is there a limit to how many times you can run the Gleaming Deaths? No. You can run it as many times as you'd like. But that about covers it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I hope you guys enjoyed the information. Again, this is PTS, so there is subject to change for some of the mechanics and difficulty. But I would love to know your guys' experience if you have gone into the PTS. For those who haven't and have seen some content on it, I would love to know what your opinion is on the raids as well. For me, I enjoy it and I think it's great. I think it's balanced. It's difficult enough, but not too difficult where it feels impossible. They covered a lot of bases to prevent cheese, but yeah. The only thing I would change is the end rewards, maybe a guaranteed four star mod. Now, before we go, shout out to Nyanimator, who is another wonderful streamer on Twitch, and my buddy Rivis for helping me out and getting through these raids. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching. Happy hunting, good luck, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.